In this video, we take a closer look at the basics of testing metal hardness, with a particular focus on the Brunel hardness test. In many applications, components need to have not only high strength but also excellent wear resistance. This is especially important when two or more parts come into contact with each other. Examples include gears, shafts, bolts, pins, and guide rails. High wear resistance essentially means a hard surface, ensuring that it doesn't get damaged when in contact with neighboring components, thus minimizing wear. To measure this, parameters are needed to characterize a material's hardness. Before these values can be determined, however, we must first define what hardness is. In everyday life, we typically describe a surface or material as hard if it can't be easily scratched. On the other hand, a soft material will show clear scratch marks. In fact, this principle, where a standardized object is pressed into a material, is used to define what's known as indentation hardness, or simply hardness. Thus, hardness can be defined as the resistance of a material to indentation by a standardized object. Based on this definition, all hardness testing methods follow the same basic principle. An indenter, whether spherical, pyramid-shaped, or cone-shaped, is pressed with a specific force into the material surface. The hardness value is then determined by the size or depth of the resulting indentation. Different hardness tests have been developed depending on the material being tested and the specific conditions. The measured values from these tests generally cannot be converted into one another. Therefore, hardness values can only be compared if they were obtained using the same method. The most common testing methods include the Brunel, Vickers, and Rockwell hardness tests. In this video, we focus on the Brunel hardness test, while the other two methods are covered in more detail in separate videos. Hardness testing can be performed on specially prepared specimens or real components, as long as the indentation does not affect their functionality. In principle, all hardness testing methods are considered destructive, since the material surface is locally damaged during the measurement. In Brunel hardness testing, the material or component is first positioned under the microscope of the testing machine. The surface is then brought into focus by adjusting the table height, ensuring the correct distance to the indenter. A small ball made of cemented carbide is used as the indenter. The testing machine automatically rotates the mounted indenter, and the test procedure begins. The cemented carbide ball is slowly placed onto the surface, and then gradually pressed into the material with increasing force. The force reaches the maximum value, which was preset, within about 10 seconds. The applied force is then maintained for an additional 10 to 25 seconds, allowing the material to settle. This step ensures the measurement is reproducible, regardless of the material, and provides comparable results. The indentation left behind, which forms a spherical cap in this case, is then examined under the microscope. The larger the indentation, the softer the surface. To evaluate this, the testing machine automatically switches back to microscope mode. The evaluation is based on the diameter of the indentation, though the outline is typically not a perfect circle. Therefore, the diameter is averaged using two measurements taken at right angles to each other. Using the mean diameter, the testing machine calculates the hardness value. In this case, the surface has a Brunel hardness value HBW of 203. The principles behind determining this hardness value based on the indentation diameter are explained in more detail in the following. The Brunel hardness value is the ratio of the applied force FKP to the indentation surface S left by the indenter, which in this case forms a spherical cap. When the Brunel hardness test was introduced more than 100 years ago, the force FKP was specified in the now obsolete unit kilopond. One kilopond was defined as the force equivalent to the weight of one kilogram on Earth, or 9.81 newtons. Today, forces are always given in newtons. To convert a force from newtons to kiloponds, you use the reciprocal value of the gravitational acceleration, which is 0.102. Therefore, if the force is measured in newtons, the hardness value must be calculated using the factor 0.102. The indentation surface S forms a spherical cap, which is a part of the spherical indenter with diameter D. The surface area of the spherical segment can be calculated from the indentation diameter D using the formula shown. Thus, the Brunel hardness value HBW, which is unitless, can be calculated using the given formula. It is important to note that the force should be expressed in newtons, and the diameters must be in millimeters for the calculation. Due to the anisotropy in the material's deformation behavior, a perfectly round circular indentation is rarely left on the surface. 
Therefore, the indentation diameter D is determined by averaging two indentation diameters, D1 and D2, measured at right angles to each other. To prevent the material from being displaced over the edge of the specimen during testing, which could result in a falsely low hardness value, the center of the indentation should be at least 2.5 times the indentation diameter away from the edge. When performing multiple hardness tests on a single specimen, it is important to maintain a minimum distance between indentations. If the indentations are too close, hardening effects around the indentations may affect the results. This distance should be at least three times the indentation diameter. Additionally, the specimen thickness should be at least eight times the depth of the indentation to prevent bulging on the underside, which could distort the measurement. For consistent and reliable results, the indentation diameter should be between 24% and 60% of the indenter's diameter. If the indentation diameter is too small compared to the diameter of the indenter, the indenter barely penetrates the material. This results in blurred edges, making it difficult to accurately measure the indentation diameter. Additionally, the low deformation leads to a higher proportion of elastic recovery, causing the indentation diameter to shrink significantly when the indenter is removed. As a result, Hardness values derived from overly small indentation diameters are not reliable or valid. On the other hand, if the indentation diameter is too large, approaching the diameter of the indenter, the indenter penetrates too deeply into the material. This causes excessive deformation at the edges, forming bulges and resulting in blurred edges. Additionally, deeper penetration would produce only a marginally larger indentation diameter. Due to measurement inaccuracies, this could yield nearly the same hardness value despite the increased penetration depth, making the results inconsistent and non-reproducible. Special care is needed when testing the hardness of a material using the same force but with different indenter ball diameters. A smaller diameter concentrates the force over a much smaller area, subjecting the material to a significantly greater load. This leads to deeper indentation, but the smaller ball may not create a larger indentation surface. Additionally, Strain hardening effects increase significantly, which can result in a much higher hardness value. Consequently, hardness values obtained using different indenter diameters are not directly comparable. To ensure comparability when using different indenters, the test ball must apply the same contact pressure on the material surface in all cases to exert an equivalent level of stress. The contact pressure depends on the distribution of force over the circular area projected in the direction of the applied force. This area is distinct from the indentation surface used to calculate the hardness value. In the example shown, the large ball applies a force of approximately 375 newtons per square millimeter of projected surface area, whereas the smaller ball applies 1,040 newtons per square millimeter. The smaller ball thus imposes a much greater load on the material, resulting in different hardness values. To achieve the same contact pressure with the smaller ball and obtain comparable hardness values, the test load must be proportionally reduced. In this example, using a reduced test force of 662 newtons provides the same surface-related force, ensuring identical loading conditions during the test. For comparable hardness values, the surface pressure between the indenter and the material surface must be consistent in all cases. As explained, the contact pressure depends on the spherical indenter's projected area in the direction of the force, which is directly proportional to the square of the indenter's diameter. Therefore, comparable hardness values are only obtained when the ratio of the applied force to the square of the indenter diameter is the same. This ratio, which represents the contact pressure, is known as the load factor B. In the original definition of the load factor, the unit of force used was the kilopond. Since forces are now expressed in newtons, the conversion factor of 0.102 must be applied. In both examples shown, the load factor B is 30. The load factor is standardized to values of 1, 2.5, 5, 10, 15, and 30. Depending on the material being tested and the expected hardness value, reference tables provide recommended load factors. Using the given formula, the required test force in newtons can be calculated based on the unitless load factor and the selected indenter diameter. The diameter of the indenter must be specified in millimeters for accurate calculation. Cemented carbide balls made of tungsten, with standardized diameters of 1, 2.5, 5, or 10 mm, are used as indenters for Brunel hardness testing. Smaller diameters are required for testing thin sheets, as larger indenters could cause the material to bulge on the underside of the sheet. 
Large indenters are also not suitable for determining the hardness of thin surface layers, as there is a risk that the surface layer will be compressed into the underlying base material instead of accurately measuring the hardness of the surface layer itself. However, larger indenters are needed when testing coarse-grained materials or heterogeneous microstructures, such as cast iron. The larger indentation involves multiple components of a heterogeneous microstructure in the deformation process, resulting in a hardness value that reflects the overall microstructure rather than just isolated areas. This ability to test heterogeneous microstructures is a key advantage of the Brunel hardness test. In principle, however, it is primarily suitable for soft to medium hard materials. Depending on the material, the Brunel method can measure hardness values ranging from 10 up to a maximum of 650. The standard compliance specification of Brunel hardness includes the hardness value, the indenter diameter in millimeters, the test force in kilopons, and the time under load in seconds. These values are listed without units and separated by slashes. If the test was performed with a standard time of 10 to 15 seconds, the time under load can be omitted from the specification. The abbreviation HBW stands for Hardness Brunel Wolfram, referring to tungsten, as tungsten carbide is now commonly used for the indenter. In the past, hardened steel was also used as the material for the indenter, and this was abbreviated as HBS. However, steel balls are no longer used in Brunel hardness testing today. For unalloyed and low alloy steels, there is an empirical relationship between the Brunel hardness value HBW and the tensile strength. This relationship states that the tensile strength, in newtons per square millimeter, is approximately 3.5 times the Brunel hardness value. In principle, the Brunel hardness test is not suitable for very hard materials or hardened surface layers, as the indenter does not penetrate deeply enough into the material. Increasing the test force does not resolve this issue, as it leads to excessive deformation of the indenter. The flattening of the indenter results in a larger indentation diameter, which can falsely indicate a softer material. Very thin sheets also cannot be tested using the Brunel method due to the bulging of the material on the opposite side of the sheet. To address this limitation, a different hardness testing method was developed by Vickers, which is explained in more detail in the next video.